Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. Now I just got the block back from the machine shop and I had to take it there because while I had the crankshaft in and I was checking the main bearing clearance, there was a thrust clearance issue with the thrust bearing. And I took it to the machine shop to have it checked out. While it was there, I had them uh, clean it. They degreased it and they fixed this cap for me. I had them check that. And uh, then I had a Magnaflux to make sure there's no crack. So I just got the block back. Now, if you're gonna be doing any work and you're starting from scratch like this, when you work on your block, when you bring it back, if you put it on the floor, put some cardboard underneath it so that you don't damage the block or move it around on the concrete and scratch it. You don't want to scratch anything, so protect it while you have it sitting down. Now the first step we're going to do is put in the core plugs. These are core plugs. They're not freeze plugs, even though they were referred to or even the part number says freeze plugs. They're not freeze plugs. They're actually core plugs. They're made out of brass, so they're pretty flexible or they can bend. Uh, and these are core plugs. This is the, the, these are the part of the mold where when the cast iron is poured into the sand cast, this is where the cast iron is poured into the mold to form the block. Then it's machined off later and the holes are machined so that you can put these plugs in. Those passageways where the cast iron flows through, those are called sprues and then there's runners. And that's how the molten metal gets into the sand mold and it gets distributed and that's how uh, the, the metal gets in there. So these are core plugs, not really freeze plugs, but it doesn't really matter. So we're going to install these first before I put it on the engine stand because they're much easier to install while it's on the ground and or while it's on a solid table. If you don't have a table, you can do it on the ground, that's fine, just put something underneath it. So we're going to install these first. Now if you're doing this yourself, you can use, if you don't have the tool, you can use a socket. And when you choose a socket size, do not choose a socket that fits inside the plug. Because if you choose one that fits inside the plug, it's not going to be pressing on the outside of the plug. And when you initially hit it, you run the risk of bending these and it won't seal properly. So choose a socket that fits on the outside shoulder of the plug. That way you're pushing on the plug itself on the outside and you'll get the maximum strength. Because it is brass and if you hit it in the metal, hit it in the middle, you run the risk of having these sides collapse in and not sealing property properly. This happens to be a one and a quarter inch socket which fits nicely on the outside of the plug. First step is to clean the inside of the hole to make sure it's free of any contaminants and as you can see there is rust in there. So I'm going to clean that out. Some of that's in the water cavity there. So I'm just going to clean out the edge where that goes on and I'm also going to clean off the plug, just the outside of this plug so that there's no grease or anything for my fingers on the outside of the plug. Now you have to use some sort of sealant on these plugs. I'm using Vibratite core plug sealant. So you can see it says core plug sealant on here. They even call it core plug sealant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this up and I'm just going to put, I'm going to put it on both parts. So I'm going to make sure I coat the inside of the hole. So I have that surface completely covered. You don't want to put too much in there because you don't want it to go on the inside of the block. You don't want it to end up in the inside of the water cavity there. So just put a little bit there. Then without touching the surface, I'll put some on the outside of the plug itself. Okay, just like that. Gonna lightly drag it towards the bottom chamfer on the plug to make sure I have 100% coverage all the way around. Like that. Okay. Don't want any on the inside here, so I'm lightly gonna make sure it's cleaned off. And I will set the plug in place, just like that. Now, it's gonna rock because the brass is probably not perfectly flat. And the whole key to doing this is getting it started. So I have a two and a half pound mallet, like this. 
I'm going to set the socket right on the outside and gently tap just to get it started. Hit square on. Now you might feel it start to go one way or another. You can compensate by hitting, a, hitting on the opposite side of where you feel it moving. And as you start to drive it straight in, it will start to straighten out by itself. Once you approach bottoming out, the socket will just about fit. And it should be bottomed out all the way around. Like that. Last step is to wipe it off and make sure that you have it in far enough so that you can see the countersink on the hole. Once it's past that countersink, you've gone far enough. You can drive it inside the water jacket there, so be careful. Just past that chamfer on there is far enough. Now I can do the rest of the engine. have the block just sitting here and it's easy because it's upside down I'm gonna spray on some dry coat this is a rust preventative this is something that will prevent this block from rusting before I get ready to paint it while I'm building it I'll just lightly cover the whole outside of the block up I think this is still available I'll put a link to this in the uh, description of the video now with all the plugs in the engine that need to be there in place, the next thing I'm going to do is install the cam bearings while it's on the floor or on a table, whatever you're doing. And the reason I'm doing that is very specific. When you build an engine, you want to put it together in order or in an order where you risk or eliminate the risk of damaging other internal components. For example, let's say, let's say I installed the crankshaft right now put the crankshaft in, I put it on the engine stand, install the crankshaft and torque it down. When I go to put a cam bearing in there, if I accidentally drop it and it falls on one of the rod journals or the pins for the rod and nicks it, you just damage your crank, you gotta take it out and have it polished. So you wanna do all the work, all the bearing work, all the work you can and do it in an order so that, and think about it, so that if you do happen to drop a component, you're not gonna ruin something else inside the engine. So you always work in a logical order. At least that's the way I do it. We'll continue on that in the next video. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. <laughs>